bug out, lights out, balloon goes up, whatever the situation, we all have a plan, at least I hope we do, to get from where we are when the things go bad to where we want to be, a place we can sustain life, a place where we can survive, a place where we'll be safe. In order to do that, we may have to plan for the eventuality that there could be trouble between us and getting to where we want to be. We may also have to leave the place that we thought was our safe and secure home. And that's a real crisis because most of us don't really have a good plan B, a plan to go someplace else, even if it's just for a little while. We're very locked into defending hearth and home. That being said, I think it's incumbent upon us all to start looking at things and thinking of things along that level. And so what I have is a three-level survival approach, if you will. There is level zero, uh, which is the bare... I call it level zero because it is something you should always have on you. And in front of you, you see my level zero. My cell phone, a pocket knife, which is a uh, basically a tactical folder uh, type knife. Uh, nothing uh, extravagant to it, but it's very heavy duty and very sharp. And of course, my survival kit, which I have detailed in an earlier video, and the link for it is right there. If you want to pause this and pop that open and have a look, it'll lay out the contents of that basic survival kit. These will all fit in my pocket. This fits in the back pocket uh, where my wallet, uh, would, well, on the opposite side of my wallet, and pocket knife, of course, and cell phone, always carried with me as well. My level one gear, this is what is always in my vehicle when I get up and go to work. When I'm going somewhere for a little bit of a drive uh, around town, I carry my level one with me. It's never more than a couple of hundred yards away. I can get my hands on this real fast, throw it over my shoulder, and I can go. That's going to be covered in a video here if you'd like to have a look at what's in my level one. And then, finally, is my actual main bug out bag. And that's the bag that if I have to leave where I am, or if I'm going on an extended trip, or I'm going to be away from my house more than a few miles, I'm going to want to have this bag in the back of my vehicle. And I will lay out for you what's in there. When I sometimes will have, and I leave room in there, because sometimes I need to put this level one gear into the top of that bag, and there is room for it. It's about 65 pounds. If I throw my ammo and other gear on it, it's going to weigh close to 80. So it's going to be a very heavy bag for a little while. And I'm always working at ways to kind of pare things down. I want to caution you, you can really go overboard when you start packing your bug out bag. Uh, it, it can get really insane. So what we want to do is we want to work in sub-assemblies. I want to challenge you, therefore, go look at my video about your survival kit. That'll get you started. Once you have built that, you'll know exactly what needs to go into the next piece of gear, which will be your level one. The level one can be independent of this other gear, so that if for some reason you lose survival kit, uh, you lose a pocket knife and everything else, there is a somewhat redundancy inside of the level one. The level one is truly, though, the crucial piece of gear. It is the heart of the entire system. So if something happens and you have to abandon your rucksack and dump it, you want to be able to reach into the top and get this gear out. This gear here can keep you alive for days, possibly even weeks, if you have a little bit more training that I'll try to give you to help you extend what's in there. This level one is fairly comprehensive, although I'm always adding little things to it, and that's the key word. Remember, this is only for a short period of time, so we don't need to have some extensive, elaborate pieces of gear in here that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, like uh, beacon senders and satellite transponders. We can get by with some very basic stuff, including things you're going to find just around the household or at uh, China Mart or Walmart, whatever you prefer to call it. We'll get into that gear in just a moment. And then finally, back to the main rucksack. Uh, I chose the Marine Corps ILBE because it is a very good piece of gear. I have done a lot of rucksack marching in my military career, including uh, the longest I did was 120 miles in four days with a 70-pound ruck. 
very similar to the one that you see in front of you, although a civilianized version, not nearly as nice, durable, or comfortable to wear. I cannot fully recommend that rucksack at this time because I have yet to take it on a ruck march. And that's because of that. Uh, I still have that cast, uh, that uh, boot on my foot. I still have the broken toe. I cannot do any road marches just yet. However, I think this rucksack is going to be a winner. I got it for $157, including shipping and handling, in very good, uh, superior used condition with all the pieces necessary to make it uh, uh, an awesome piece of gear. All right. That's essentially an outline of what the gear is in a nutshell. Now, the specifics we're going to cover in detail, and we've already got the survival one in front of you. The next one you'll want to have a look at will be to go and look at this gear here, and there will be a link right here shortly. Thank you for tuning in, folks, and I hope this is helping a bit. Uh, I'm enjoying not only making the videos, but the interactions I'm having with all of you. Thank you.